Hi everyone, in this video I will show you how I've built the shader to create the magical sword effect on my latest animation. This effect is 100% shader based and it's not as complicated as you may think. We are going to use a technique that is often used in VFX for video games called Dissolve. Let's get started. Here is the model that I'm going to use and the effect that we are going to build together. This can be done on any model, but you will have to follow a few steps that I'm going to show. I'm gonna simplify the current shader I've used for the animation because there are secondary effects that we won't need and that make the node tree a bit too complex. So I will get rid of every node but the principal BSDF shader. Note that my base color is set to black so that we have a dark weapon. I will give it a more classic look by pushing the metallic value to 1 and giving it a dark gray. I will also reduce a bit the roughness so that I have sharper reflections. Note that I'm in preview mode and we can access the default HDRI using the drop down menu. And to be able to use transparency on our object, we do need to modify the blending mode of the material. In the properties panel, under the material setting, I will go into blend mode and switch from opaque to alpha clip. Using this blend mode, our object is whether fully opaque or fully transparent based on the alpha threshold. Before we start building the shader, I will just reorganize a bit my windows. Instead of the outliner, I will set a 3D view, set it to preview rendering. In the render mode, I'm using EV and I've enabled the ambient occlusion, the bloom and the screen space reflections. From there, I can collapse the left window so that I have more room for my shader editor. This tutorial is sponsored by myself. If you want to learn all my rigging technique or if you want to create stylized character from scratch, you will find all you need on my Gumroad page. Use the code P2Design and get 10% on whatever product you want. The first thing we want to create is a simple gradient that goes along the whole sword. With the principal shader selected and the node wrangler add-on enabled by default, I will press Ctrl T. It will automatically create me a full texture setup, but we won't be using any image texture so I get rid of the node and I won't be using the UV in this example, but the generated coordinates. Then I will add a texture, gradient texture set to linear and I will rotate it on the y-axis by 90 degrees to get the gradient to run on the length of the sword. I can now press Shift A and add the converter color ramp to be able to play with this gradient and plug in the color into the alpha channel of the principal BSDF. Now you can see as I play with the white value, part of the sword is getting transparent. Any value under 0.5 become transparent. So any darker gray than 0.5 is transparent. So let's now bring some details into this dissolve effect. I will press Shift A and add a noise texture. I will then select the mapping node and press Ctrl Shift D to duplicate it and keeping it connected to the texture coordinates node. I've used a new mapping node so that we can play a bit on the scale of the texture on the length of the sword. This depends on the shape of the sword you are working on. As the generated coordinates use the bounding box of the object to project the texture. Hence, it's a bit stretched on this very long model. To mix this noise texture, I will add a color mix RGB and I will plug in my gradient and my noise and switch to soft light and push the factor to 1. I can now use the output of this mix color to drive the color ramp and as you can see, if I play with the contrast of this color ramp, I still get darker values on the handle of the sword. So we keep the directionality of our gradient plus 
the interesting pattern of the noise. So I can now plug in the color ramp into the alpha input of the principal BSDF and we will get the dissolved effect onto the salt. If we now zoom in a bit onto the salt, we can see that our noise is pretty rounded. So we can increase the detail level and play a bit with the roughness to get something a little more interesting. This is very subjective, so just play with the value to fit the style you want to get. The problem using a color ramp is that we play with black to white color and we can't see our whole so, to be able to do so, I need to change the color input of the black flag. But this is not a property that's gonna be very easy to expose and to later animate the effect. A more flexible and commonly used node for this kind of effect is the map range node that we can find in the converter. Because it allows us to manipulate the range of the output as on the color ramp, but also of the input. So the first step is to manipulate the minimum value that will be output. So the two minimum value and set it to 0.45 so that we entirely see our sword. This value may vary a bit, but it should be close to 0.5, which is the threshold of our transparency. It now means that for an input value that goes from 0 to 1, basically a black and white value, we will output a value that goes from 0 0.45 to 1, so a light grey to a full white. This is why our sword is fully opaque. But if I now push the minimum input, it means that the minimum input is getting higher to get to this 0 0.45 threshold. Hence, we recover a bit of transparency and our dissolve effect is back on track. Let's now add a bit of magic to it. The trick is simply to add a color ramp that will allow us to drive the emission of our principal BSDF shader. And we will make the edge of the transparent area becoming shiny as embers. We can simply add a color ramp and plug it into the emission strength. And the trick is to inverse the color ramp so that the dark area won't be emissive, but the area close to the zero value that become white because we have inverted it will become emissive. I will change the color of the emission to red and control shift to click the principal BSDF. Now I can play with the position of the color ramp flag to get thinner effect. So now we have our basic effect and we can work on the emission color, but also the emission strength to get a more interesting result. Let's now duplicate the color ramp so that we can change the color of the emission. I will plug in the previous color ramp and I will switch the color to a red to yellowish orangey color. This will drive the emission color of our principal BSDF. From there, to be able to dial the strength of the emission, I will add a converter math node set to multiply and I will plug it between our color ramp and the emission strength. I will push the strength to 20 for example and I can now play with my map range node to see the effect. You can then play with the different color ramp with the value of the multiply node to set the effect to your taste. What I'm doing now is adding reroutes node that you can find in the layout when pressing shift A to make my node tree a little cleaner. Now to get a better access to the different input we want to play with on the shader, I will add two input values. You can rename those nodes by going into the item menu and change the label. You can also change their background color by clicking the color option and selecting a new color. I will plug the value node called strength into the second multiply socket 
and I will plug the value node called dissolve into the from minimum input of the map range node. We can now play with the dissolve value and our effect is finally done. With the shader built, I've imported a former model I've created. I will select the sort model that have the dissolved effect, select all the nodes, press Ctrl C to copy them. Then I will select the shield model I've created previously, press Ctrl V to paste my node setup, and I will just plug in the alpha channel in the alpha channel, emission in emission, and emission strength in emission strength. Then don't forget to convert your shader to alpha clip. And now, by playing with the dissolve value, I get exactly the same effect as on the salt. I will need to play a bit on the color ramp value, maybe on the color of my emission, but as you can see, it's flexible and we get the famous dissolve effect. This is the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one.